Welcome everyone. Uh, this webinar is hosted by the GLSS Turkey chapter. We are happy to have you as the participants to this event. Uh, today's speaker is Musa Sofyan Kore from uh, Algerian Space Agency, and he'll be presenting his talk titled Blind Source Separation Methods and Their Application to Processing of Remote Sensing Data. Sofyan, I think we can start. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So uh, I would like to complete it. And in addition to my main affiliation, the Algerian Space Agency, I am uh, also with the Institut de Recherche en Astrophysique et Planetology, which is a part of the University of Toulouse from France, and also with the Université de Sciences et de Technology of Oran from Algeria. And I mentioned this, uh, this, uh, the three affiliation, my three affiliation, because the, the work that I will talk about uh, is done in collaboration with uh, with colleagues from this uh, this uh, this three affiliation, these three institutions. So, firstly, I would like to to highly thank Alp El Turk, my colleague Alp uh, from the IEEE Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society UK chapter for the invitation. And uh, I also thank very much all organizers from the GRSS for uh, such initiative and thank all participants who are present today to, to listen to me. So today I'm very happy and it's a great pleasure for me to talk about blind source separation basis methods and uh, application to processing remote sensing data. So here I would like to mention that this talk is uh, is mainly intended to, to, student, to students and uh, I hope that it will be useful for them and useful for all participants and I hope that my talk will attract some people to, to the field that I will talk about. So I think that I have 45 minutes for the presentation and after that we will have 15 minutes for questions. So I will try to, to respect the allowed time. So today, uh, I I split my talk to to six sections. Um, firstly, and as an introduction, I will very briefly, very quickly try to to give you some definitions about optical remote sensing data. And after that, I will show you uh, one of the most important problems faced when uh, processing remote sensing data. And this problem is the one called spectral mixing problem. And then I will talk about blind source separation BSS methods or BSS concept, and I will give you an overview about it. And after that, I will try to give you a link between blind source separation methods and spectral and mixing techniques. And then I will show you some and supervise spectral and mixing methods. And finally, I will give you some functionalities or some applications that we may achieve by using and mixing based methods. So, as an introduction, uh, when talking about optical remote sensing data, we are talking about 3D cube, and this cube is indexed by two spatial dimensions and one spectral dimension. And if we fix a spectral position and we see all considered pixels, so ha here we are talking about observed spectral band. Conversely, if we fix a spatial position, X and Y, and we see all considered wavelengths, we are talking about an observed pixel spectrum. Moreover, this data, this optical remote sensing data are characterized by two main resolutions. The first one is the spatial resolution that is related to to the spatial dimension of the pixel, which represents the area covered by that pixel. And the second resolution is the spectral one, which is related to the number of considered spectral bands. When this number is equal to one, so we are talking about uh, panchromatic data. When this number is about 10, we are talking about multispectral data. And when this number increases, we are talking about hyperspectral or ultraspectral data. 
So now it's very important to, to, to mention that the main objective of processing remote, send, uh, remote sensing data is the restitution of ground truth at a given scale and for a given application. And moreover, the analysis of observed spectra allows to, to achieve this objective. Uh, why? Because the spectra allow the identification, the quantification, and yield to a map of the spatial distribution of some surface components. So now I, I move to the second uh, section of my talk. And this section is related, as mentioned, to the most important problem faced when processing optical remote sensing data. And in order to, to illustrate this problem, which is mainly caused by the special resolution of, uh, of our considered data, in this slide, you have two types of data. The first one is panchromatic image with 1.6 meter special resolution. And the second one, is a hyperspectral image with eight meter spatial resolution. So if we if we see a part of the, the considered hyperspectral image, it is easy to see that some pixels contain more than one component. And this component we we can call them pure material or end member. So the observed reflectance spectra of these pixels are mixtures of spectra of pure materials contained in those pixels. And these mixtures may, may cause difficulties for the restitution of the considered ground truth. So uh, here the question is, which analysis for this mixed pixels or mixed spectra? So in this slide, you have standard uh, standard mixing room problem, uh, which is linear mixing uh, linear mixing model. Uh, why? Before because before answering the first question, this question, which analysis of this mixed spectra or pixels, we must uh, answer another question, and this question is, since we are talking about mixtures, firstly we must define the mixing model. In this slide and in the simplest configuration, when the image scene is, uh, is flat with uniform illumination and when the atmosphere is ignored and without intimate mixtures, the mixing model is linear. And this, is, uh, this mixing model is the most popular and standard case. And there are many research works on that mixing model. And uh, on the contrary, when we are facing non-flat scene, in particular with the presence of 3D structures, especially in urban environments or when the illumination is not uniform, the mixing model becomes non-linear. Of course, we may imagine many non-linear mixing models, but the main one is the linear quadratic or bilinear mixing model. And these models are, uh, are more complex than the linear one. And uh, I will try to, to, to give you some details about these models and, and mixing methods for these models later. So now I, uh, I back to the standard case and uh, in which we consider the linear mixing model. And in that model, the observed spectrum of each mixed pixel or that we call uh, mixel is equal to linear combination of end member spectra contained in both pixel. And in this standard configuration, we also consider that each pure material or end member is represented by the same spectrum in the whole considered image. Uh, also, what I would, uh, I want to say that the mixing coefficients are equal to fractions of surface of each pure material. And these coefficients, again, when we consider the standard case, these coefficients are called abundance fractions or simply abundances. Of course, the desired spectra and abundances are unknown and uh, they obey two uh, to, to main important constraints. The first one is related to the non-negativity of their values. And the second one is the well known as the sum to one of abundances. Uh, indeed, all manipulated variables are non-negative and the sum in each pixel of fraction of surface are equal to one. 
So now, and to in order to, to answer our first question, and in order to avoid difficulties when processing optical remote sensing data to restitute a ground truth, so we should unmix this observed pixel. And if we can do it in blind way, it would be even better. So therefore, we should imagine and mixing methods that unsupervised unsupervised and mix observed data to obtain the spectra of pure materials and their associated abundances in each pixel of the considered image. So now in this slide, you have a general overview of spectral and mixing methods and uh, as an input, uh, we have the original optical remote sensing data and in particular hyperspectral images. And we have the processing box uh, with two, two main steps. The first one is the end member spectral extraction step. And the second one is the abundance fraction map step. And in addition to these two main steps, we can add two optional steps. And the first optional step is uh, the number, is the estimation of the number of end members. And the second one, second optional stage is the dimensionality reduction of original optical remote sensing data. And these two steps, these two optional stage uh, may be performed by using other signal or image processing based methods. And finally, as uh, outputs, we have uh, the spectra of pure material, the spectra of end members, and their associated abundance fraction maps. So now I, I move to the next section that is related to an overview on blind source separation. And uh, in this field, the goal is, uh, the objective is to estimate some source signals only from a set of observed signals, which are mixtures of those source signals with unknown mixing transform. And by mixing transform, I mean values and the structure of the mixing model. So in this slide, you have an illustration of such configuration. So if we have two persons talking, and if we have two audio systems recording uh, their discussions, of course, if we, uh, if we listen to the two records provided by the two audio systems, we probably hear mixtures of the talk of each person. So the objective is to estimate the voice, which is source signal of each person, only from the two recorded mixed voices, which are observed signals. And this blind estimation is done by using a separation system, and hence the terminology of blind source separation. Uh, moreover, the separation may be achieved, but up to two indeterminacies. The first one is the permutation and indeterminacy. Indeed, we cannot control the order of estimated voices. In this example, in this slide, the first original voice is blah, blah. The second one is blibli, bli, but the first estimated voice is blibli. Bli, and the second one is blah, blah. So we cannot control the order of estimated uh, source signals. The second indeterminacy is related to, to the scale factor or filter factor of estimated uh, source signals. And in this same example, even if the original voice is blah, blah, the estimated signal may be blah, blah. So we have a scale factor of the first estimated voice. And the same thing for the second original voice that is blibli. So we can obtain estimated voice maybe blibli. So, and uh, now it's, uh, it's very important to mention that these two indeterminacies do not cause a problem in the field of remote sensing. Why? Because, and for the permutation, I want to say we, don't, we do not care because the order of estimated signals is not important. And for the scale factor, this, this indeterminacy uh, may be controlled by the two mentioned constraints, the non-negativity and the same to one constraints. So now in this slide, you have the general blind source separation configuration. You have the source signals S that are mixed when they pass through to mixing system. And this mixing system provides observed signals X, 
which are then and mixed by using a separation system to obtain estimated source signals Y. Now, now uh, I would like to mention that there, is, there exist three main categories of blind source separation methods. The first category includes methods based on independent component analysis, and this ACA-based methods mainly assume the mutual statistical, statistical independence of source signals. So this is the first category of methods. The second one, the second category of methods, uh, we have methods based on non-negative matrix factorizations which assume the non-negativity of source signals and mixing coefficients. So, and the third, uh, in the third category, we have methods that are based on sparse component analysis, which assume that the source signals are sparse in a given representation domain. Uh, I would like to say here, of course, it's possible to imagine a combination between methods from these three main categories. So now, that said, if we want to take advantage from the above concept, above, above blind source separation concept, so firstly, in, in the field of remote sensing, so firstly, we must answer these two questions. What are we called observed signals? And what are we called source signals? So indeed, we must firstly, define observations and sources in order to choose which method that we can use. So in this, in this slide, and in, for answering this, this question, it's clear that we have two main, two, two categories, two configurations. In the first one, we can consider each observed pixel spectrum as an observation, and therefore we can consider each end member spectrum as a source signal. And this case may be called spectral sources configuration, spectral sources case, in which abundance fractions are the mixing coefficients. Now, and in connection with the three main blind source separation method categories, uh, it's not possible to consider the use of independent component analysis methods because the end member spectra are not statistically independent. On the contrary, they are very highly correlated. Also, it's not possible to consider using sparse component analysis methods because the end member spectra are not sparse. Uh, it's possible to, to consider non-negative matrix factorization, but this is rather complicated to the non-uniqueness of the solution of such it. Uh, iterative methods, uh, iterative non-negative matrix factorization algorithms. So this, this configuration is to be ignored. And now, the second configuration is possible. This one is, this configuration is possible by simply transpose the first one. In the second configuration that we can consider, in which we can consider each observed spectral band as an observation, and therefore we can consider each abundance fraction map as a source signal. This configuration, this case, may be called special sources configuration in which end member spectra are the mixing coefficients. Again, and in connection with the above three main blind source separation methods categories, it may be difficult to consider using independent component analysis methods due to sum to one constraint, which represents linear dependence between abundances in each pixel. Uh, also, it may be difficult to consider only iterative non-negative matrix factorization algorithms due to their problem of the non-uniqueness of the solution. And now I, uh, I come to a possible solution. Indeed, if uh, it's possible to, to consider sparse component analysis techniques uh, because the abundances are sparse. Why? Uh, because it's difficult to imagine that each pure material is present in each pixel of a given image scene. 
and therefore these abundances are sparse. Thus, uh, it's possible to use the sparse component analysis technique to estimate mixing coefficients that are the end member spectra. And after that, we can uh, use methods which is based on the non-negativity constraints, such as non-negative risk squares or non-negative matrix factorization in order to estimate abundance fractions. So by this way, uh, we can easily imagine a method that combines sparse component analysis and non-negative matrix factorization or non-negative least squares methods to n-mix optical remote sensing data. Such a method is based on the following assumption for uh, each end member. Uh, we must assume that there exists some small pure zones which contain pure pixels and this small pure zones con contain only only the considered and the member or only the considered pure material. So uh, here the main idea in, in such a method is to firstly detect these pure zones by using small and sliding analysis window or atom. And the detection is performed by using a correlation or variance criteria. So, and after that, and as a second step that we call, that we can call estimation step, all potential columns of uh, of the mixing matrix of potential columns and these columns correspond to the desired end member spectra uh, may be estimated by using for example the median or the mean on each spectral band of detected pure zones and the next step called clustering step and in this step uh, the the main objective is to select the final columns of the mixing matrix. Once again, these columns correspond to the desired end member spectra. And this step is performed, may be performed by using a clustering technique. And each obtained centroid of each cluster is considered as a final column of the mixing matrix. In this step, it's also possible to use the clustering validity index that allow estimating the number of columns of the mixing matrix. And therefore, Allow knowing the number of end members. And finally, the last step of such a method consists in uh, abundance fraction maps extraction by using a method that is based on the non negativity constraints, such as non negative least squares or non negative matrix factorization. So, these kinds of methods uh, are the ones we have developed for long moments. So, if uh, if you are interested by, by such a method, you can see our uh, paper in pattern recognition or uh, our conference paper, IEEE Wushba. Uh, it must also be said that there is a plethora of methods performing the spectral and mixing of optical remote sensing data. Once again, when considering the standard case, when we consider the linear mixing model. And in this slide, you have one of the most papers talking about those methods. This paper is that of Bukas Diaz and other colleagues. And also one of the first papers talking about the spectral and mixing is that of Kishava and Mustard. So the most popular methods are those based on geometrical concepts. And to illustrate this, and once again, when we consider the linear mixing model, if uh, we plot a two spectral bands image that contains only three pure materials, all pixels will be belonging to a simplex with three vertices. And each one, each vertice corresponds to a desired end member spectrum. So here the, the idea is to retrieve the adequate or the best simplex that encloses the point cloid of an image. This geometrical methods try to find in their end member spectral extraction step the best or the adequate simplex that enclose all image pixels and the vertices of the simplex are the desired end member spectra. And uh, I would like to, to say it's very important to mention that these methods, these geometrical methods, may be classified onto two categories. 
In the first one, the methods assume the existence of pure pixels for each pure material in the considered image. And in such case, the vertices belong to the point cloud. Otherwise, for the methods of the second category, when the pure pixel assumption is not considered, the vertices do not belong to the point cloud. So among the methods of the first category, methods that assume the pure pixel assumption, we can set the pixel purity index method, PPI method, that try to find XM pixels in a given representation domain. And this method is one of the most popular due to its variability. In this slide, we have another method based on the pure pixel assumption. And this method is called the end finder. This method assumes the presence of pure pixels in the original image and tries to maximize the volume that can be formed with the point cloud in the data cube. Another method, which is called the orthogonal subspace projection or SP method. And this one uses the concept of orthogonal projections. We can also uh, see the vertex component analysis, the VCM method, which is similar to the OSP technique, but the vertex component analysis techniques, uh, technique is more robust to noise. So for the second category of methods that ignore the pure pixel assumption, we can see the iterative constraint end member and the minimum volume constraint non-negative matrix factorization. And these two methods try to find the minimum volume that encloses the point cloud. Other methods of the second category, we can, uh, we can also see the minimum volume simplex analysis methods, the MVCA and the sizal that follow similar way of the MVC NMF method, but the MVCA and the CISL techniques allow the violation of the non-negativity constraints due to the possible presence of noise or perturbations. And these two methods and also the MVC NMF may be initialized by using one of the methods of the first category, such as the VCA. Of course, we can easily imagine a combination between all these seated methods. So now I, uh, I move to other non-standard mixing models, which consider more realistic and more complex configurations. The first configuration is the one in which we may consider the spectral variability phenomenon, which is also called intra-class variability phenomenon. Indeed, and uh, unlike the standard linear mixing model, in which each end member is represented by unique and the same spectrum in the whole image. In this non-standard configuration, each end member may be represented by slightly different spectra. And this case is more or less more realistic in comparison with the standard linear mixing model. And in order to illustrate this phenomenon, in this slide, you have spectral plots of some observed pixel samples that represent three classes or three pure materials. And uh, from this plot, it's easy to show that each pure material may be represented by different spectra, which have the same, same shape, but with slightly different spectral values. Therefore, in that configuration, the standard linear mixing model is not valid anymore. And the concept of end member spectra should be replaced by classes of end member spectra. Also, and uh, since we are talking about variability, we should define references with respect to which we have variability coefficients. And this variability may be modeled by considering two ways. In the first one, the spectral variability may be additively tuned with respect to references. And in the second way, this variability may be multiplicatively tuned again with respect to references. So in this slide, and for the first way, when considering the additively manner, we can model observed data by using the following linear equation. So in each row, 
of the observed data matrix X represents one spectral band. The matrix S contains a reference spectra associated, for example, with the first pixel. And this matrix, this reference spectra is repeated P times, where P represents the number of pixels of the considered image. And the matrices A and B respectively contain the upper and the lower variability coefficients. And their first block contains zeros in order to, to, to not impact the reference spectra. And the matrix C is a block diagonal matrix that contains abundance fractions. So from this specific model, we have developed a multiplicative non-negative matrix factorization based algorithm, which optimizes this cost function. And the optimiz optimization is achieved by using this iterative update rules to obtain all matrix variables. Also, these this rules are supplemented by these two constraints in order to avoid that obtained values of estimated spectra are not greater than or uh, one and are not lower than zero. Moreover, we have last constraints and this one consists in forcing the P minus one sub matrices of S uh, to be equal to the first updated sub matrix. And uh, if you are interested by, by such method uh, and its extended version, you, you can obtain more details of, about this method in our uh, SPI remote sensing 2019 and IEEE M2GAR 2020 uh, conference papers. This is the first way. In the second way, when considering the multiplicatively manner, we can model observed data by using another linear formula. Once again, each row of the observed data matrix X represents one spectral band. The matrix S contains reference spectra associated again, for example, with the first pixel. And this matrix is repeated P times where again, P represents the number of pixels of the image. The matrix A, contains all non-negative variability coefficients. And the first block of this matrix contains the one value in order to not impact the reference spectra. And once again, the, the matrix C is a block diagonal matrix that contains abundance fractions. And the particular operator used here uh, is the matrix element-wise product. So from this specific, uh, the second specific model, we have developed a multiplicative non-negative matrix factorization based algorithm, which optimizes this, this cost function. And the optimization is achieved by using uh, this update rules, which are supplemented by these two constraints in order to avoid that obtained values of estimated spectra are not greater than one. Also, a last constraint is considered, and this one consists in forcing the last P minus one sub matrices of S to be equal to the first updated sub matrix. And also for each element of the first block of the matrix A to be equal to one. And this work was uh, presented at the ESIPCO 2019 conference. So now I move to, to another non-standard mixing model, and this one is a non-linear one. And in particular, here we consider the linear, quadratic, and bilinear mixing models. These models are in particular valid in urban environments with the presence of 3D structures. Uh, in these models, second order interactions are considered in addition to the first order ones. When considering only interactions between different end members, 
we are talking about the bilinear mixing model. And when we consider in addition interactions between the same and, and the members, we are talking about linear quadratic mixing model. So we can consider that the bilinear model is a specific one of the linear quadratic model. So in that configurations, we can easily model observe the data by using the following equations in which we have in addition to linear and the member spectra and linear abundance fractions we have pseudo auto or cross and member spectra and second order abundance fractions so from these two models we have developed specific algorithms for the end member spectra extraction step and these algorithms which uh, optimize a specific specific cost function uh, this this algorithms are gradient based nmf non-negative matrix factorization ones in this algorithms gradient based update rules are used to estimate linear and the member spectra and the other uh, auto uh, and course and member spectra are directly obtained from the linear ones so for more details about these methods, I invite you to read our works presented uh, at IEEE IGARS and MLSP 2016 uh, conference papers and very recently accepted and published uh, today to morning our recent paper in the MDPI Remote Sensing Journal. So now I come to to the last section, uh, I want to, to, to say the nice and interesting one. So in this session, I will try to show you some interesting functionalities or applications that we can achieve by using and mixing uh, base methods. Indeed, we you, you will see that and mixing may be seen as a key with which it is possible to open many doors. The first functionality or application is the one linked to, to data fusion or sharpening. And by sharpening, I mean the fusion of two observable images with different spatial and spectral resolutions to obtain an unobservable image with the best resolutions of the two observable images. So here this functionality is achieved by using an, and mixing base method with or without taking into account the spectral variability phenomenon and by considering the standard linear mixing model or another more complex mixing model. So here the idea is to merge two images. The first one is with high spatial resolution, but with low spectral resolution. And conversely, the second one is with low spatial resolution, but with high spectral resolution. So the fusion is achieved after, after two main steps. In the first step, the two images are unmixed. In successive or in a coupled or in joint way, by considering a given mixing model with or without taking into account the spectral variability phenomenon. And then this unmixing process lead to high spatial resolution information obtained from the image with high spatial resolution and high spectral resolution information obtain it from the image with high spectral resolution. And this high spatial and spectral resolutions information are combined by considering the same mixing model used in the end mixing step in order to obtain the unobservable image. So in this slide, you have an example just for an illustration of obtaining the results by using and mixing based methods. So in this example, the linear mixing model is considered by taking into account the spectral variability phenomenon. So you have a reference uh, image, low multispectral, low spectral resolution image, low spatial resolution hyperspectral image, and you have some results. And uh, the obtained sharpened image is compared to the reference one. So in this example, you, you can easily show the good visual fidelities of the obtained sharpened image. 
So once again, for more details, you can see our published papers in this field in IEEE ETGRS and GRSL journals and in the Journal of Applied Remote Sensing. I move now to second functionality, second application by using a mixing based methods. And this one is related to object detection. And as a first example, here we are interested by the detection and area estimation of solar panels in urban hyperspectra image. And the idea here is to use known spectra obtained by ground measurements or from spectral libraries in the unmixing process. And this known spectra of the considered material are not updated in this unmixing process. So this process can be seen as a partial unmixing process. And only the associated abundance maps are estimated in addition to spectra and abundances of unknown materials. And therefore the estimated abundance maps of the considered known material allow the detection and area estimation of those materials. So for this first example, solar panels with their known spectra obtained by ground measurements are considered and an airborne hyperspectral image that covers a part of Toulouse urban region is used. So in this slide, you have obtained results, which are confirmed by using very high special resolution ortho images. So again, you can obtain more details about this work in our papers, IEEE IGERS 2018 conference paper and the MDPI remote sensing journal paper. So here, very briefly, I show you second example for object detection by using and mixing based methods. And in this example, we are interested by detecting and mapping the cow units uh, in the Algerian central Hogar. This, this, this region is uh, located in the Algerian desert. And the same approach is used. Known spectra of cow units are used and this spectra are obtained from the USGS spectral library. And this spectra are used in the partial and mixing process. So in this slide, you have the obtained abundance fractions map of the cow unit that allows each detection and its mapping. And these results were confirmed by ground investigations in two sub regions. So uh, you can see our paper presented at the IEEE and Tugars 2020 conference for more details about this work. Of course, we, we, we may also imagine detecting and mapping on other surface components by using such a partial and mixing approach. So in this slide, you have another and mixing based functionality in this one we are interested by shadow composition of for hyperspectral data. And very quickly, the idea here is to use the end mixing process in two regions, shaded and unshaded ones. And then we, we replace shaded spectra by their associated unshaded ones. After that, we recombine once again by using the same mixing model only in the shaded region and shaded spectra with the corresponding estimated abundance fractions. Of course, we assume that shaded materials are also present and fully illuminated in the observed scene. So, and uh, uh, also we assume that shaded regions are previously defined. So in this slide, you have a hyperspectral image, the defined shaded zones or regions and the new hyperspectral image corrected hyperspectral image after shadow composition. Of course, this process uh, may improve the performance of a classification task. Uh, again, if you are interested by this work, you can obtain more details in our IEEE IGARS 2018 and IEEE M2GARS 2020 conference papers. Another application, another functionality, in this slide you have an application related to change detection by using and mixing based techniques. But since the end mixing process provides abundance fraction maps, and if we apply it on two images of the same area and acquired at different times, and by analyzing the obtained abundance maps, we can detect changes in the considered region. So in this slide, you have an example. 
in which two images of the same region and acquired at different times are used. These two images are with different spectral and spatial resolutions. And after using a fusion and mixing based method, we were able to detect some changes by analyzing by means of absolute difference, either abundance maps or by analyzing created images with the same spectral and spatial resolutions. Uh, for more details here, you can also see our OZIPCO 2019 and IEEE M2GARS 2020 conference papers. So finally, a last functionality, a last application. And this application is related to dimensionality reduction of hyperspectral data. And in this field, we are interested by band selection. And the idea here is to select some decisive spectral bands from the original ones by analyzing spectra of pure materials contained in the image scene. And this spectra, which are obtained by using an unmixing method, ideally represents surface objects. And if we remember that the main goal of processing remote sensing data is to obtain a ground truth, the selection of decisive spectral bands may be achieved by considering only bands at wavelengths where we have maximum dispersion between spectra. So for this task, and after performing and, and mixing of the considered image, a dispersion measure is calculated on the obtained spectra. And after that, this dispersion vector may be segmented by using a sequential clustering technique and then uh, for each obtained segment, only one spectral band is selected. And this one corresponds to the wavelength where the dispersion value is maximum. Once again, if you are interested by such work, you can obtain more details in our papers in, uh, in European Journal of Remote Sensing or our uh, IEEE M2Rs 2020 conference paper. So that is all for me. Thank you very much for your attention. And once again, many thanks to, to Alp and all organizers for giving me this opportunity to, to talk about my research works. So here you have my, uh, my email addresses if you want to contact me. and I will uh, reply with great pleasure. Once again, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Karoi, for this wonderful um, we have time for questions of about 10 or 15 minutes. You can ask by opening your microphones or through the chat any way you like. We have uh, one question from the chat from Anup Mohandas. Um, the question is, how do we decide a specific threshold value for a particular target material while performing such unsupervised classifications to extract the similar pixels, for example, kind of clay alterations. How do we decide the specific threshold value? So I want to, to say that, uh, that unmixing methods can be seen as uh, classification methods, sub pixel classification. So the idea is not to classify a pixel into one class or a second class, but the idea is to, to detect uh, the material present in a mixed pixels. So this different uh, and mixing, mix, uh, and mixing methods are different from, from classification method. But uh, yes, we, we can threshold uh, and obtained uh, values, obtained abundances to obtain a classification. I don't know if my answer is clear or not. Um, okay, I have a question. You not only presented a good framework, but also presented very various applications for blind source separation or unmixing. Um, could you provide us with some insight about what kind of other applications may we see in the future or what kind of applications would have more prevalence for this kind of work? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, 
For the end mixing, uh, we, we, we can imagine other and mixing, uh, other nonlinear and mixing model. And I think it's very important to, to do some works on this nonlinear and mixing model. This is the first answer and uh, for application, uh, we can imagine uh, the detection and the mapping of some surface components by using uh, partial and mixing methods. So my idea is to this, uh, we have developed partial and mixing method and we have used it in detecting and mapping the cow in it, which is very important material in, in the desert in the Algerian central Hogar. And, uh, and very interesting uh, application is to use the same, same partial and mixing method to, to detect and to map other objects, uh, surface objects or uh, surface components for mineralogy exploration, for example. We have another question. Uh, this one is from Tusef Ahmad. Uh, the question is how to apply blind source separation for noisy data, for example, impulse noise strips or sparse noise. And they have planetary data like this, basically. It's less of noise, I guess. Oh, yes, of course, I have presented the uh, uh, methods, classical methods of BSS methods, but uh, there are many, many other methods which consider noise. And uh, uh, if the colleague is interested by BSS methods, I can send it, uh, send, uh, send uh, some references, some bibliographic references to, to the colleague uh, in which uh, he, he can obtain more details about BSS methods, more complex BSS methods with uh, which consider uh, noisy data. Mm -hmm. There's also like uh, unmixing based denoising and works like this. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Another application you, you are talking about denoising. Uh, now I have another idea, another uh, application for, for using uh, and mixing based, we can uh, easily imagine uh, develop uh, and mixing based method for denoising hyperspectral data. Any other questions? Uh, thank you for the presentation. Yeah, I guess that's it at the moment. Uh, as Dr. Koroi has mentioned, feel free to contact by email. And this webinar was hosted by the ITRP GRSS Turkey chapter, and we were very happy to host uh, Dr. Sofia and Koroi for this wonderful talk. Thank you, Dr. Koroi, once again. Thank you, thank you. And thank you to all participants for participating in this webinar. Uh, let me also briefly mention that this webinar will also be uh, uploaded to the GLSS YouTube website. So you know, feel free to check the, this wonderful talk once again from there. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you in future events. Thank, once again, thank you very much, Alp, for this, uh, this initiative and for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.